are recording. Yo. Hello. How's it going? Um. We your mileage may vary. <laughs> We're back to work on more short stories and right now we're looking at the scribe and the doctor and unless you've got anything to add I will begin reading do so okay Codex touched down on the unlit landing pad with a barely audible click in the dim glow of the control center scribe scratched his graying beard and watched the monitors for any signs of activity start log encrypt upon completion an affirmative beep emitted from the console ahead of him. I have arrived at the Tylus facility. Scanners indicate three life forms. However, any attempt at communication has met no response. Facility power is also limited to the core section. This is at odds with prior information I have received, which states an estimated 500 people live here. He frowned and glanced at the side screen. Further analysis shows no vessel other than Codex are present. Upon assessing the situation, I have decided that I am at little risk and will continue my mission as specified. The seat creaked as he relaxed back. After several seconds of silence, there was another beep. End log. Scribe sat quietly and continued to watch the screens. He felt hopeful that someone would respond to his calls or try to signal him somehow. It crossed his mind that the scanners might be wrong, an idea that wasn't backed up by the four diagnostic checks he'd run prior to landing. He was lost in thought, staring through the readout screen when the numbers changed. Detected life forms. Two. <laughs> Scribe's face contorted into one of confusion and then frustration. He pulled himself up using the armrests and made a determined two step stride to the rear of the command centre. The door to a lone storage locker hissed and slid off to one side. He hurried to pull an armour vest over his head and tighten the straps. A similar amount of thought was given to the conditions in the facility. He opted for a knee-length coat with built-in auto-heating before heading through the hatch. He followed the cramped corridor to the cargo bay, then between the stacks of data stores until he reached the ramp. It lowered with a hum, the cold air whipping at his cheeks. Laz Spear, Scribe stated bluntly, raising his hood. A tray, a tray appeared from a compartment beside him. He gathered up the spear and a handful of replacement cells, pushed the tray back in and descended the ramp. The facility was bathed under the light of a full moon. Scribe paid little attention to the metal framework and solid archways as he hurried along the walkway. His steps echoed around him, an unsettling noise in the otherwise silent surroundings. He emerged into an open dome structure. Around the edges sat various empty desks, while a large circular room stood in darkness at the centre. It was as though the workers had gone home for the night cycle, and Scribe wondered if they ever planned on returning. He took a few seconds to get his bearings. Signs above the many openings offered directions to other landing bays, shops, the pod station, deliveries and more. The scribe stood examining his choices. A quiet tapping drew his attention. It was muted, distant at first, but sped up as it got closer. He fought the chill that ran up his spine, tightened his grip on the spear, and aimed it towards the approaching noise. And then it stopped. Okay, let's take a pause here. Okay. Uh, would I... you would you care giving me a synopsis? Um, Scribe has arrived at this facility. Wants to investigate some leads that he picked Who is up Scribe? elsewhere. Scribe. Scribe is um, he travels about gathering information for. He works for a company, and the mm -hmm. company take private contracts from people for him for well to dig up information and oh so it's like stuff. like a data bounty basically yeah yeah I th yeah that, well, well i'm fucking writing that down <laughs> not bad data bounty i like that so it's like yeah. you can have bounties on people you can also have bounties on uh, on information mm -hmm. i like that that's cool and subscribe is more like a job description Yes. Okay. So you've you've come to a, a precise point here. He gives his name. Oh, well, he doesn't give his name. He gives his designation as scribe. Mm -hmm. And I don't really think I've ever worked out a name for him because he's part mm -hmm. of the whole Mirrors Legion thing. And for Mirrors Legion, I just worked on code names and single mm -hmm. names for those. 
so that might just be a holdover from that, and I'm more than happy to change it. Um, but here's an idea. Okay. Uh, this might be too much, but uh, whenever we handle a short story where um, uh, where there is a character who does a thing uh, in a place and the character's names, it, name is, is not specified it, there is always the possibility that it turns out to be one of the named characters from that we already know oh okay I mean this uh, this might not work everywhere and this uh, this principle can backfire spectacularly but uh, but in some in occasions it might uh, provide a connection point or, or reference point to to other stories that's awesome I've written this down uh, another point is like I I haven't heard the rest of the story yet, so I don't know who is this doctor person and what they are doing. But it could. What if uh, what if the doctor turns out to be one of the characters that we know, or affiliated with with some of the characters that we know? I'm going to tell where? you now that the end is definitely going to need changing. Okay. <laughs> because the the doctor in question is uh, th is this is Corey reality. Uh, servo, and that oh, doesn't okay. hold up the scrutiny. Oh, so, okay. Let's yeah. make it smaller scale. Yes, definitely. And this, uh, this, this may alter the whole story because we're about to meet another character who has been um, treated at one of servo, Servo's facilities in a similar manner to Corey. Mm -hmm. uh, so there's some tie-up that needs done there. But right for for the moment. And I need to specify that Scribe is using his last spear as sort of a walking aid as well. I haven't done a, I haven't even mentioned that. And I, I want it to appear that he's, you know, he's getting on a bit. He's, you know, um, so I wanted to share that. But other than that, I'm, I'm happy with the setting, like the mm -hmm. thick metal archways and stuff like that. I love the image that, that invokes. So right now, the current page and a half, or page and a little bit. I'm quite happy with. Um, it's obviously going to need editing. We're obviously mm. going to need to go through it. <laughs> but it holds up better than the rest, than the follow on. So I think without further ado, I'm going to continue. Uh, just one more ra oh, okay. random ish note uh, about sp uh, when speaking about uh, encryption protocols and such. I had this random idea once that if we assume that the computers at this time are functioning somewhat differently than the computers in our time and the mm -hmm. data might flow a little bit differently and the protocols may vary then what if uh, what if there was a different word to be used for what's what is essentially encryption but uh, that uh, refers to this particular data protocol so maybe like data jumble or some something of that sort just throwing it out there data jumble. it is it is something that I was thinking about already during seeker it's like um, uh, how the different uh, how the limited uh, channels operate is that uh, is that you don't have radio waves uh, flying about that you catch in in certain frequency, but that you you have data packets uh, sent and received, and they are the data is jumbled up in a particular manner, and if you are at the receiving end and you are part of that uh, that particular channel, then you have the means to unjumble it. So there's there's a, a little word building nugget there. Um, jumble. It's cool. Yeah, nice. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. I I think uh, when I was when I was work when I work on any story with Scribe, 
Codex is, and this is getting off the point a little bit, mm-hmm. but Codex was built um, with the intention of being able to comprehend most types of data. Like, so if you run into a computer from a faction on Archaos, it's going to be potentially wildly different to a computer mm-hmm. on your on somewhere in your space. Mm-hmm. They're going to use different protocols, different uh, file names, all that sort of stuff. So s- s- Codex is kitted out in a way that he he can make use of all as, mm-hmm. as much data as possible. Mm-hmm. Um, but this is extremely specialist, and I think Codex and only a few people who work for his or the company have got this ability. But that that was one of the things I was thinking about is how data is stored and how what the viability is of transferring it, and you know, is it compatible and that kind of thing. Uh, of course, I'm thinking that if you have uh, if you if you already have the occupation of data jockeys and uh, and, <laughs> the, <that> down. <laughs> and the mm, and and data bounties are a thing, then it would make sense that they also have uh, that these people that the data jockeys uh, have specialized equipment. Uh, like mm-hmm. for example, their suits or their their personal their personal equipment would have to be. Uh, kit it out so that they can interface w- with various uh, uh, various data and like it could be that when you're when you're entering when you're on a mission into let's say your space then uh, then you customize your kit in such a way that you will know you will be able to read their records better and if you're going into rail space then uh, then you're customizing your gear to better suit that way and and so that the ships as well as personal uh, personal gear personal suits uh, would be would be already job specific so he w- he wouldn't be running around in jeans and t-shirt he would have <laughs> to he, he would he would have to have already like job specific gear on him and this? and same <laughs> and same with ships, that the ships would uh, would come with various uh, uh, various capacity of data storage and data reading and and data uh, decompiling, mm-hmm. and uh, there might be different levels to this. You might have like junior scribes, who who have I don't know one <laughs> basic, well using our our era terms one server one mainframe that can storage, I don't know, such and such uh, number of such and such data in such and such forms. And meanwhile, you can all, all also have like huge ass, hugely specialized, hugely kitted out, uh, very, very advanced as uh, uh, ships like this mm-hmm. that have, that have uh, capacity to read and store and uh, and operate uh, very different formats of data. Yeah. Yeah. Codex is hardcore. He is certainly not a junior scribe anymore. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, there was something else I was going to say. Oh Any yeah, that was personal it. Personal gear. Uh, uh, yeah. The, the as you said data suit. Mhm. Scribe, in typical fashion, for all of my characters, still use the fucking data pad. And so, we I need to get rid of the data pad for Scribe, ideally, and go with something like a data suit or something like that, because that sounds awesome. Yeah. And with the custom kit and that kind of thing, I really get behind that. Yeah, and, and I would think there are, there are also some neural interface doodads that allow him to directly... Uh, directly interact with certain shit. Let me let me fire up Le Pinterest. Uh, I just I just saw a picture earlier that kind of jiggles my jiggles <laughs> my jimmies. It's like if you if you think about the difference between a regular person using uh, a mobile phone and uh, and some sort of specialist uh, 
who has I don't know an earpiece and uh, um, let me think I, d <laughs> I don't I don't have any good examples now mm -hmm. but uh, but um, but you know think think of think of a spy thriller and think of somebody who is like a walking gadget and for a second there I am going to share screen Boop. Boop. Oh, <laughs> that's so pretty cool. Yeah. So, so some. So, okay. Maybe, maybe not so obviously visual and uh, and sci-fi eye candy, but uh, but basically some neural implants or or some some sort of interface stuff uh, that uh, that gives you gives you the ability to control data feeds and operate data feeds. It doesn't it doesn't even have to be uh, visuals. Uh, the, the thing is that um, when okay, tension to head. <laughs> <laughs> so so these days everybody's uh, when when people are hyping uh, virtual reality all I can think of is yeah, but it is still it is still just like a viewing device and listening device. Uh, but if I'm if I'm taking like a an imaginary leap into further future into actual virtual reality, it would be something that uh, the the signal or the the input would interact more directly with your brain, so that you create the mindscape without the uh, without the ocular doodad in between. So while he could have all sorts of uh, uh, more more basic and more crude things that he can read off the wall or read off his palm or read off uh, read off a page or whatever, he could also have some sort of operating stuff that he can uh, that he can control just with his brain. Mm. I love this idea. It, it, now that you've said it, it seems so obvious, right? <laughs> the scribe would have a neural interface mm -hmm. and he'd be augmented in some way that would assist him in his work. Like that's that's fantastic. Mm -hmm. and, and like I said, it makes so much sense now that you've said it. Yeah. And uh, and when it comes to when it comes to the equipment and materials, this would be some this would be a place where uh, where the suit is something that you wear for a long time and that is uh, equipped in such a way that it uh, uh, it basically cleans you as you live in it and maybe it eats away your uh, excess skin and uh, and gobbles up the gobbles up your grease and uh, <laughs> and uh, turns it into into an energy source for example and uh, another tangent about uh, all sorts of skin suits uh, I was thinking about, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna pop up paint here. I was thinking about the uh, uh, excrement interface, basically. And this, this won't, uh, this won't solve the uh, space poop problem of our day. <laughs> but, uh, but for the future, <laughs> I have. <coughs> I have thought up a do doodad. So so let's say the the sort of like the interface doodad. Uh, it would have to adjust to the user's uh, particular genitals, but uh, uh, and so it would have to be customizable or or whatever or pro programmable even. But it's basically like this. So you have three three components that interface with the user's skin. This is your butt. This is your belly. This is your anus. So basically, <laughs> basically, it's like a a plug or Lego thing that uh, completely 
uh, fits to your uh, to your privates or to your neithers and uh, and again this is something that uh, requires some sort of uh, advanced as uh, advanced as uh, space materials because it is it is not like a a sticker on the skin it is something that uh, becomes part off you for for prolonged time so like it's it's not like a catheter or, or anything it is more like uh, a bio implant or, or like a tack on do that so the, uh, let, let me work on a female version here so you have a little nozzle do that that plugs into your butt and that will receive stuff without it uh, it even getting out of your butt because that that's that will be useful in a vac vacuum then the vagina interface can vary <laughs> <laughs> let's let's right. uh, let's say let's say that let's say there is a cup here All right uh, that has different capacities and uh, and then the uh, then the pee hole plug, and and the and the uh, I don't even know what to call it, like bio interface or you know some something <coughs> something uh, something matter of fact and and mundane. Mm -hmm. the, the leg is here, and so this is this is part of the undersuit, and on one hand it interfaces with the user's body. And on the other hand, uh, the processed materials, and again, this is like smart processing, not not uh, not just breaking down, or like not not just redirecting poop, but more like breaking down the carbon into whatever. Uh, it it will also interface with the user suit, and some of some of the stuff that comes out of your body might actually be used up as uh, as as fuel or 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 batteries, and also water is probably filtered or something. So there you go. It's pretty hardcore. Yeah, but this 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 sort of system is pretty much a a must if you think about uh, battle suit situation where you spend uh, uh, weeks and months in uh, uh, inside the suit <laughs> mm. so like red versus blue right here <laughs> <laughs> so for example in uh, in the male version there would be uh, there would be like a soft soft sack for the balls <laughs> and uh, and and the hollow area for the for the penis but uh, but the basic uh, so the shapes can vary but the basic idea remains that this uh, this implant or this I don't know uh, quantum diaper <laughs> 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 basically it locks onto your body it it becomes part of it it's like a second skin and uh, it will process and uh, and redirect uh, everything you eject so that you don't have to actively worry about it at all and nice. uh, and it's and it's gonna and it's gonna do that uh, for prolonged times. You'd need something like that under a suit that you were wearing long term. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Definitely. Yeah. So let me stop sharing again. Too much sharing, man. <laughs> okay. And that's that's that that's that's the little uh, biological tangent when it comes to all sorts of specialist suits. Delicious. <laughs> mm -hmm. Do you want to take a break now? Uh, I'm alright for the minute if you okay. are. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Let's carry on. I'm going to do a little bit more reading. Yeah. Scribe held his stance, spear forward and alert. He tried to call out, but his voice was hiding in his throat. He took up a deep breath and was about to try again when a, when a blood-chilling scream stopped him in his tracks. Every single muscle in his body tensed up, followed by the sudden onset of a cold sweat. Something subconscious took over and Scribe crouched, 
his head jerked around, looking for the nearest cover. Staying low, he made his way behind one of the desks and slid into the corner. His breathing had become deep, and uncontrollable shiver shivers rippled from his chest. Uh, pause there. Okay. I'm immediately picking up something that I want to address. So, if we assume that uh, there is a whole world of data jockeys who work data bounties, uh, which means they go to dangerous places to retrieve data, it means this dude would have to be uh, trained in moving. So it's it wouldn't be it wouldn't be your boring our day librarian who doesn't know how to shoot. Like these these guys would basically have to be uh, as uh, as trained as the uh, as the guys who do people bounties. They might they might not be as uh, as aggressively uh, inclined, but they would still have to be uh, trained in awareness, in tactical movement, uh, all like hand to hand combat uh, protection, all all that sort of stuff. Plus, if they are kitted out with. Uh, all sorts of augment augmentations and uh, and info doodads. They would also probably be able to use those uh, to check their environment. Mm. So we can bring the augments in here. Yeah. So even even it. even if this guy might get caught by surprise in some situation right now this is probably not it like right now he is going into an un unknown place he is he is uh, prepared he knows that uh, that there might be danger out there so he would he would his choices would have to be a lot more deliberate mm. okay Sorry, I'm just writing down a little mm. note here. Cool. Done. Yeah, I suppose that that does make sense. If they if they are going into these dangerous locations, mm -hmm. then obviously they're not gonna be going in completely untrained. <laughs> yeah. Shit. He is no dweeb. Yeah, no, yeah, that's fair enough. It's like <laughs> tangent ahead. Uh, <laughs> it, it's like the principle that in in an RPG where you're managing a party, let's say Wasteland Two, you would want to make the uh, the biggest, brawliest, brawliest, the uh, strongest, healthiest guy to medic because uh, he will be the most likely to be the last one standing. <laughs> like basically, you 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 do want your medic to be the last one standing. <laughs> So, for example, in uh, in my Wasteland 2 party, the dweebiest guy is the sniper because he can uh, he can do his damage from the f from the most uh, from the farthest distance. And then there's the middle range people, but the the one who uh, who is skilled or like the the medic guy is also the rifle guy and he can also do some punching and he <laughs> also has uh, the highest health. Makes sense. Yep. <coughs> <coughs> oh man. Oh yeah, I didn't apologise at the height of this video that I've still got a cold and I'm very sorry for that. So to all the listeners out there. Uh, yeah, apologies. Um so I crack on? Yep. Okay. Show yourself. The voice was calm, almost soothing. The scribe shook his head and mouthed the words, No way. A bead of sweat ran down his cheek and he blinked to get rid of the itch it brought with it. This is your last chance. We can talk or I'll have to find you. He paused, letting the threat sink in. You don't want that to happen. The scribe had nearly bitten a hole through his lip. He closed his eyes, took a deep breath and against his better judgement replied, Peace? 
Who are you? Data procurement specialist. Describe. Why are you here? Locating information on people who went missing around Bayama. Perhaps you are in luck, scribe. Doesn't feel like it from here. If you are telling the truth, I have no intention of hindering you. Scribe risked asking a question of his own. Why? Who are you? That is something I cannot truthfully answer. He paused, as if thinking. You may call me 16. Okay, 16. He took a deep breath. I'm coming out now. Please don't kill me. He peeked over the desk. A beam of moonlight pierced an opening in the dome. Scribe followed the trail of illuminated dust to the ground. Sixteen stood, motionless, covered in blood and various medical tubes. Scribe involuntary... Oh, there's no... Oh, hang on. <laughs> there's meant to be a full stop there. Damn Ooh. It. That threw me right off. Sixteen stood, motionless, covered in blood and various medical tubes. Scribe involuntarily gasped and stumbled back to the ground. What happened to you? he asked, barely able to form the question. I don't remember. What do you remember? Pain. Then opening my eyes, a machine was operating on me. Like an auto dock? Sixteen growled. Nothing like an auto dock. <laughs> uh, the scribe pulled himself up again. I didn't mean any offence. Sixteen turned his head, slowly, and took his time to measure Scribe. Then what? I broke free. They tried to stop me. His eyes thinned. They failed. Do you know what they were trying to do? I do not. Sixteen looked at his hands. Several tubes ran from below his knuckles up his arm and into several canisters around his waist. I haven't given it much thought. I have been... busy. You killed them all? Any who didn't evacuate. Is there any chance you signed up for this? Nobody would sign up for this. Not knowingly. And so you think you're one of the people who was abducted? Until you mentioned it, I hadn't considered it. Yet, it seems like a logical place to start. Okay, stop here. Okay. So this whole sequence, from here to here... Mm -hmm. uh, needs a lot of refocusing because right now there is this is one of those a lot is go a lot a lot of things are going on but not not much is actually happening okay yeah so uh, yeah i feel i felt rough reading that bit out like there's a lot of back and forth and sometimes it'll, so yeah it's not yeah so i would say that the goal with this sequence is to determine uh what's being achieved uh, like what's 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 the focus here? Uh, what is not the focus, and and then trim accordingly and sort out the rest. Because mm -hmm. yeah, right right now there's a lot of dialogue, and I would immediately want to cut like at least for but maybe half of it. Yeah. So let me think. Uh, so far, the tasks that I can see ahead is uh we should uh we should uh, ponder a little bit on the nature of the scribedom so so basically this this <coughs> this is um the way i'm i'm currently starting to think about this is that uh the the scribe business uh is very similar to seeker business except it's about data mm -hmm. so it's it's kind of mir mirroring mirroring the uh <coughs> Sorry. <laughs> it, it it is sort of mirroring the stuff that Jewel has done, and this is also giving us a little bit of uh, a support structure or, or reference points, so that some things that we have already worked through for Seeker, we can also apply here. Is that oh okay? You have a goal, you have a bounty. Now you have to find a way to uh, fulfill that bounty. Uh, you get into the location. Where where your objective is, what are the uh, what are the analysis that you run when you ru when you get to there? Uh, what are the threats that you expect to be meeting? Uh, how do you how do you proceed? So basically, the f 
right now, Scribe already knows that somebody is there. Mm -hmm. So, so the fact that this somebody has already made him uh, should be the surprise, not that somebody is there. So, so it's like he should be moving in with caution, and maybe he shouldn't spill his mission so easily, and also. As far as he knows, he has no reason to be afraid of whoever is there because, after all, he's the data jockey, and data jockeys are dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> so, so basically, uh, there's there's a little bit uh, there's the se sequence of web events to rethink here a little bit, yeah. and also I would try to rethink the. Uh, the setup of the facility itself. Okay. Like, for example, if it's a data center, why would it be open to moonlight? Oh, it's uh, it's not. A, I think I've probably not done a good job of describing this, but it's just it's a facility that's meant to look like a, a station that's running. And he's landed at that station, and he's moving through. Like this is just a small area in a larger space. Oh, okay. So this is not the data area at all. Yet. No. Okay. No. So this is like the vestibule. <laughs> yes. And indeed. is it? Uh, is the place uh, intentionally made to look derelict, or or is it in any way damaged or whatever? It's not. I think uh, sixteen is going to cover this in a later paragraph, but it, it's. Uh, the well, way we, I we have it, to know it now. The way I view it in my headcanon is it looks like a settlement, but everybody's just up and left. Like people oh, can okay. return so, tomorrow. So it is made to look as something else. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, so this is something that should also make uh, into the early on analyzing the data. It's like the thing looks like da 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 da, but the data doesn't add, add up. Yeah. Uh, so this this adds to the caution aspect even more. And another thing to watch out here is the viewpoint, because right now we are clearly following the scribe's viewpoint. So he can see somebody stand up, we can't just say uh, 16 stood. I think that was Scribe standing up from behind the desk, actually. More poor writing from my... 16 stood motionless, covered in blood. Oh, okay. Yeah, and and this is this is the point where they are only meeting. So this is where I would definitely uh, describe what Scribe sees instead of saying 16 stood. But uh, right. but this is but this is more text level thing. This might be a little bit too advanced for for today's discussion. But yeah, when it comes to when it comes to the exchange between sixteen and uh, the scribe, uh, then we'd have to sort of map out uh, what either of them is trying to achieve and. How? What's what's stopping them, and what are they doing about it? Mm -hmm. Sort of create this back and forth thing through. That is uh, going back to an earlier point you made about the and uh, talking about the dialogue between sixteen and scribe. Mm -hmm. They, you're absolutely right when scribe stumble like reveals his entire thing straight up. Like that's not good. Mm -hmm. It's also something that happens in Mira's Legion as well. Like mm. Mira stumbles onto the station and she tells Scribe at that point, it's a later story, she tells him everything and mm -hmm. they they immediately start working together. It's a big problem I've got and I need to sort of avert this in the future. Mm -hmm. So I'm glad you pulled that up. Yeah. Mm. So this is this is something that uh, should be built up to. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, and uh this is again something text level, but I'm going to inject it in here. So let's say uh, the bo both the guys have already revealed their presence to each other, and, uh, th and <laughs> at this point, Scribe will say that he is a a data pro procurement specialist, and then the and then the other could say something like, "Oh, a data jockey. I've heard of you, your kind." 
I prefer scribe. You know, some some sort of thing like this. <laughs> this is straight straight out to Killjoys, where they <laughs> establish the uh, nickname and the official name when they when they drop off a dude in the prison, and the guy at the reception says, "Ah, Killjoys," and touches. Well, what, wait, what was their thing? Oh, they were also reclamation agents. Mm-hmm. Mm. I think we might need to change that. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I know, yours is data procurement specialist. That's that's okay. So theirs was... Reclamation... Yeah. Oh, Killjoys! Reclamation agents. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like, who gets to, who gets to call whom what? Mm -hmm. who, gets, who gets to use the you people... <laughs> <laughs> uh, data jockey. I prefer scribe. <laughs> yeah, I like it. <laughs> right. Yeah, scribe's a data data procurement specialist, quote unquote. Uh, but I am horrifically obsessed with the word reclaimer for whatever reason, so it does pop up from time to time, and if I see it, now that I know that Killjoys uses it, I mean, I should have known that, I've seen six episodes of Killjoys now, uh -huh. so I should know this by now, but... Yeah, that was that was in the first episode, I think, <laughs> yeah. where they drop off the guy. It's a great series. Mm -hmm. I really enjoy it, it's cool. <laughs> Especially the, the fight, that was... It's <laughs> 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 it was cool. Um, continue reading. Let me see how much how much longer. Maybe we should take a break. Uh, I will definitely put a break in the recording here. Okay. For data procurement. Mm -hmm. So we shall see in the next one. Bye bye.